It is a beautiful day here in Nashville, Tennessee. We are sitting here on Broadway at the Hard Rock Cafe. I'm Katie Neal from Odyssey Country, and I'm so happy to be sitting down in person <laughs> for the first time in a very long time with Lee Bryce. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm so good, and it's so nice to see you. We're so appreciative that you were taking time off from playing all these big time, sold out venues, and you're doing a totally private show for yes, us here tonight, yes. which is going to be so fun. Nick Anderson was our winner, and he's got nine friends who are coming with him for this totally private show with you. Now, if you were trying to win a totally private concert on the radio, like who would be your band or your artist that you're like nonstop calling trying to win for? I was just trying, I was just thinking about that. I was like, okay, I wonder what kind of friends he brought. <laughs> Right. Cause like I would be kind of torn. Like with my friends, I'd be like, "Well, if I bring this group, I'm probably gonna get in trouble." So, <laughs> Lee's gonna kick us out. <laughs> so I'm gonna get in a, yeah. get getting a bad rap. Mm -hmm. But they're great friends. Or do I just get go with the safe route? Maybe I don't know. Maybe there's a mixture here tonight. We'll yeah, see. <laughs> no, definitely. It's gonna be very fun. And I feel like you know we were just talking about the pandemic and everything, like finally getting yeah. back to life and live music. And I feel like things are so great, but we've had like all this up and down yes. time. But I feel like one of the silver linings for you is that you had this like unbelievable number one song, hat trick award winning, <laughs> one of them girls, which I feel like you have to be having so much fun yeah. playing this on the road right now. We are, yeah. I mean. Um, I thought about actually during the like the depths of the, the pandemic, you know, I thought there's a couple of young artists out that had like their first number one ever, right? And I remember going, thinking to myself, gosh, they, they don't know what it feels like to like hear a crowd getting louder and louder as that song is going up the charts and then it's a number one and then all of a sudden, I mean, that feeling you get on that stage from that live audience, I thought, you know, I'm gonna say a prayer for these, these kids, like these yeah. couple people who've like, had their first number one and didn't have it, you know, weren't able to feel that feeling. So let's make, hopefully they get another number one. Yeah, so, so they exactly. get to feel that rise, you know. And, yeah. Uh, but no, it's been it's it's been great. We uh, we were very fortunate. We worked hard during during the pandemic to keep, you know, stay momentum, relevant, yeah. keep momentum going, you know. And so that when we came back out, um, we were ready to rock. But yeah, it is fun. One of them girls and rumor and the duet and I mean. Remember, I don't mess with, they're all just, it's like we never stop. So yeah. it's it's really been nice. That's awesome. And nine consecutive number ones, which is so <laughs> exciting. And then you've got your latest single, Soul, which I love because it's got so Come much on. soul and funk. But you, you've said to me before, you were a little apprehensive about putting that song out because you were worried that like maybe it wasn't country enough. Yeah, I, actually, yeah. I, at first I heard the demo and it was, it was really, really different. But I thought, okay, I do it my way, like how I would do it. I think I can make it kind of cool. And then we did it. And I was like, this is cool, for sure, but hmm, I wonder about my country, country, country music, like hardcore country fans. And then I got randomly got a call from my uncle Al, you know, which I'd never get a call from. Ever. <laughs> You're like, somebody's died. <laughs> I'm like, Uncle Al. Something's wrong. <laughs> uncle Al? Hey, Lee. It's your Uncle Al. <laughs> I said, what's up, Uncle Al? Bo, that song, so that's going to be a number one. I'm telling you what right now, Bo. Come on. I was like, okay, a minute. So anyway, get off the phone with Uncle Al. I'm thinking, well, if Uncle Al likes it. My focus group has checked out. <laughs> yes, I'm good. <laughs> that's amazing. And then the last time we spoke, I know that you were kind of like in the very early stages of starting to work on album number six, kind yeah. of like going through demos yeah. and songs and everything. Where are you now? Still, still kind of doing that, probably looking at like, couple months maybe to go in and maybe go get that first recordings you know like final recordings of stuff that mm -hmm. I can then start tweaking in and dialing into a record but I'm really still going through that process of yeah. I mean it's it's gotta be tough for you I was gonna say songs. so many songs because I'm sure you're writing yeah. all the time like well, how do you even keep track well, of it I'm well, sure. it's new songs right I write every mm -hmm. day and then there's songs I wrote the last two or three years and then there's songs that I wrote ten years ago that I've still always loved just as much as I loved this song I wrote yesterday mm -hmm. that I knew that at some point they're gonna find a space so I'm still at hundreds of songs I mean I had a friend help me do it I don't know how to really do it make a, a spreadsheet of like <laughs> put all the songs here these are the ones that we're going for. Like now, I got an idea of what I yes, want this no, record maybe. to feel like. Yeah. yeah, and then like rating and whatever. I'm not sure. So they did a 
Somebody help me make a spreadsheet <laughs> so I can actually organize my brain because I've been doing it in my head all these years. And it takes me a lot longer, so maybe this will help me speed the process. Yeah, up. I was gonna, I don't take you for an Excel guy, but it definitely does yeah. help when you can get figured <laughs> Excel. out. Excel. I can't work it either, but you know, we've kind of, we were talking like been on a roller coaster of the last couple of years. And now that you're like, you know, putting this record together, how would you say, like, how does your mood or what's happening in the world, how does that affect your music or does it? You know, uh, it affects it. I mean, everything that's happening, you know, in my life affects my music, you know, and uh, a lot of that's been my family, you know, over the years, uh, the last recent years. And, um, and then, uh, even this last record, you know, the pandemic really had 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 me thinking in ways, and and then now I'm in a in a place of you know a lot of appreciation and mm, certainly and, uh, everyone is you know and just wanting to get out and have a good time. I mean, there's yeah, I mean it affects it, but it I just kind of I don't let it try to make it like sternly. Okay, I got to write a song about this. I just mm. I always go with the flow of w what I'm feeling that day, you know, and uh, and be truthful about it. You know, that's the biggest thing is just be truthful about whatever it is you're feeling that day. And I learned that a long time ago, the first time I wrote with Liz Rose. And, you know, I was like, OK, I've got this song idea. I've got this song idea. And she's like, stop. She's like, so how are you doing? What's going on? Tell me about what, what's going on in your life. <laughs> I'm like, well, I mean, I got this girl and all that. Blah, blah, blah. And like, you know, she acts a little like, like I don't understand. Like she thinks I'm going to like she, she's insecure and da, 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 da. she's insecure. And I'm like, I'm not going anywhere. Like you're, you're, you're crazy. Like, and she's like, there we go. So we write Crazy Girl, and it's a song of the year. So that's how I try to approach, you know, my days, no matter what. And so yes, every day in this whole world, in my little world, and it all kind of affects it every day. Definitely. And you mentioned being very grateful. You've had a lot of success in your career, and you've gotten to do so many amazing things. But when was the last time you had like a pinch me moment where you're like, I'm just a kid from oh, Sumter, South man. Carolina. How did I get here? <laughs> you know, it was kind of cool um, just getting to hang out with uh, some of my friends that are now, they're all superstars, you know, but we're just hanging out, like talking about you know, an 87 Chevrolet truck and like, you know, or you're going to have to name drop, you know, I mean, or, or like who, how can we have a better dove hunt over here next yeah. year or whatever, you know, it might be Luke Bryan right down the street or, you know, or Chase Rice across the street or, yeah, I mean, hanging out with Zach Brown and he shows up randomly just one day to congratulate me on, on, on sweeping, you know, the song of the year on all the, all the PROs and that's special. I mean, just, you know, just, just, uh, it was like, you know, um, this is kind of how you always hoped and kind of thought it would be and dreamed it would be and like yeah. it, it really is and but it's also just reality just normal people you know doing normal mm -hmm. things and but we also don't take for granted that we get to do extraordinary get up on a big yeah. stage and do s special stuff you know and mm -hmm. do what we love yeah that's amazing and I feel like you're very much an open book but if we, if we asked your wife, Sarah, what is something that fans don't know about you? What do you think she'd say? Oh, God. I don't know. She'd probably say a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, her view on me is different than my yeah. view on me. I don't know. <laughs> so what would you say? What's something that maybe, like, people don't really... What do we not oh, know about you? I mean, we know you love to hunt. Yeah, you know. Are you um, big into rom-coms or something? I'm a, What's your... I'm a big, I'm a big artist also not like musically but but like uh but like art wise and like engineering wise i went to school for even for architecture and i drew and painted my whole life and so like you know i was even i even this year for halloween i went as bob ross because like i grew up painting that stuff my whole life yeah. you know and uh so and the, to this day i mean um you know i love to sit down and when i'm drawing something or carving out a pumpkin for the kids. Mine's like 3D eating another pumpkin, <laughs> you know, like crazy, you know. <laughs> that, I'm always so envious of people like that because I can barely like put together a family of stick figures. So. Right. <laughs> That's amazing. Lee Bryce, the artist, we didn't even know. And then the Hard Rock is celebrating 50 years this oh. year. We're sitting here surrounded by all of this like incredible memorabilia. Do you have like a favorite Hard Rock memory or even a favorite piece that's in here? You know, I, uh, uh, one of the first times I played Hard Rock, we were in Memphis. And uh, that was one of the first times I'd ever even really been to one. You know, we were just starting out, mm -hmm. playing like in the restaurant. They had a little stage. 
And uh, uh, I remember walking through there and seeing the guitars and, and looking at them thinking, I wonder if one day I'll ever have anything that's worth being in here, you know? And uh, they actually asked me the other day if I had something and I wanted to, to you know, to donate mm -hmm. to the Hard Rock. So I was like, of course, I would love to. So, yeah. so I'm going to figure out what that is. I don't yeah, know what, you the, what they would go, want. Yeah, I don't know what they would Lee want. Bryce's wardrobe. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what do yeah. we send them? I don't know what they really want from me, <laughs> but I would totally be into it. So that was kind of a cool moment. That's really cool. That's so special. I don't know about you, but I always have wanted to do like one of the guitar smashes. Have you seen those? No. Oh my God. Whenever they open a new hard rock, everybody gets to come out and smash a guitar. Yes. Like it's Garth Brooks style? Man, yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Then you get to do it without feeling guilty because it's not a guitar you my dad, Yeah, my daddy was so mad. He was like, you cannot listen to him. I just watched him <laughs> smash a perfectly good guitar on TV. I was like, but it, but it was so cool. Yeah, it feels really wrong, but it looks so cool. <laughs> He's like, but he could have gave that to somebody. I was like, oh, I get it, daddy. You know, I, I do understand where you're coming yeah. from. I'm pretty sure these are like kind of like thrown together <laughs> guitars, like they're not real good ones, but <laughs> hopefully you see me in late in the next Guitar Smash. Thank you so much for being here and for playing this show. I know that Nick and his friends are going to be so excited tonight. Lee Bryce at Totally Private for Odyssey Country. Thank you so much. Good to see you, Mama.